and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode five. Five! We're halfway through of season one of Fargo. This episode is called The Six Ungraspables. So I've done a bit of research around like, what the hell are six ungraspables. Like what even is that? And again, we're in the Zen tradition of Buddhism. So basically, there's this thing called Dharmakaya. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of this because I've never heard it said. I've just read it. Um, but the Dharmakaya is one of the three kind of states of of being. And it's the absolute. And what that means, so there's a state which is kind of the body. There's a state which is kind of the sort of the version of yourself where you reach enlightenment. So you're still in your body, but it's a new body and you're able to um, experience oneness. And the absolute is when you actually become oneness. So you're no longer a person or an identity or a set of feelings separate and distinct from the trees and the birds and space and time and, and all of those things. It's like the absolute is complete absorption in the oneness of the universe and everything. Which is such a beautiful idea and the very short story about the six ungraspables that i've been able to find in the zen tradition is that there is um you know a leader called amon and um one of the monks says to him what is dharmakaya and he replies it's the six ungraspables and the six ungraspables are the five senses and the mind. So how does that relate to our story? I don't know yet, but it kind of it really makes me think of Molly. Like last episode, I really felt like we were talking about Molly and her ability to kind of get inside a case and like really understand the people and almost like the the movement of a case her I just I love her I have to say she's my favorite character in this program so far I really really like Molly um so yeah we had a lot of threads left open last episode so I'm not even going to do a long introduction I want to get on right into episode five so without further ado let's have at it is reminding me of the leftovers season two theme would you like to join us is is she rescuing people from the remnant everybody is wondering what and where they all came from hi lester uh how much you tell me. Mm -hmm. Say again? The sign says best offer. What are you offering? <laughs> Two bucks. Or that's uh, three bucks. Five. Tell you what, you give me $55, I'll give you the socks. And throw in this 12 gauge. What? Uh, but he just wanted some socks. This doesn't happen in Britain. Just FYI. I thought you were getting socks. In the bag. Flashback! What the heck are you gonna do with that? It's for protection. Just be careful you don't blow your own face off. Not loaded, is it? Well, if anyone could shoot themselves in the face with an unloaded firearm, it's you. I don't miss her. Is this a flashback or is he now like seeing? I'm going to go with flashback unless otherwise notified. No, he had the gun, so yeah. And now we're now. How do you get out of prison then? I, I despair, really. I just despair of it. I despair of it. What did you do? Yeah. 
I don't want to see Vern die again. No, we, we, we just said what's that? Firstly, that was brilliantly done. Secondly, yeah! It's literally a pellet from the shot that killed Vern Thurman is right in his hand. That is karma, my friends. That is karma. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Happy. Play. the infection isn't it he is not well i told him i warned him i said lester it's gonna get gangrenous it's, you're gonna get a blood infection he didn't wait what are you gonna do but this is obviously a misunderstanding why is he taking his boots off no wait ah! oh! I need a name. Uh, Just tell him. I need a name. Lord Malvo. There you go. Yeah. Lord no, Malvo. Malvo. Lord Malvo. He took. He took my car. Picture him up here. Well, law enforcement. He got it. It's from a. What do you call it? Uh, an APB. So. Lord Malvo. Hmm. He killed him. He killed us. You two are free to go. Bell's been paid. Toilet right there, Lester. Hey. No way around it. Oh. Well, Chief, there have been some interesting developments right while Chief. you were. Frank on the line. New storm data. Yeah, Frank, what you got then? I'm saying two feet new accumulation. So, uh,. We got the phone dump back from Lester's from the night of the murders. Okay, thanks much. You too. And right around the time Pearl died, an outgoing call was placed from Lester's to Leroy's Motor Inn. So, I made a call. And get this, Lorraine, the manager... Lorraine yeah. Abbey. Yeah. Uh, no, sir, Lorraine Babbitt. Yeah. Curly hair, uh, looks like she draws her eyebrows on with a sharpie. No, sir, this is a severe woman with hard hair. Anyway, she had a photo of the suspect from the naked fella kidnapping. Says he stayed one night, that being the night Hess was killed. She got a name for him, too. Lorne Malvo. And you found this how? Like I said, call was placed from Lester's house to the motel where the suspect was staying. So, I talked to housekeeping, and they say this Malvo fella left behind some tokens from the Lucky Penny. They want to know how many plows. Uh, at least three, don't you think? Now, he says he can give you two good ones and a pick up with Billy Can go Fox. somewhere Sorry. else? Yeah. So I go and talk to the lady that Hess was with, the dancer. Right? And she says that before he was stabbed, Hess was laughing about this fella that he bullied. Broke the poor guy's nose, she said. The same day. Chief, is that a yes on the baby? Shush! Right away, I'm thinking. Mister. Wait. Chief. Bill gets it. Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. Listen, I know it's not my case. But I'd like your permission to go back to Lester's house and see what he has to say. Not at his house. He's in a holding cell. I told Dougie to keep him overnight, you know, let him sleep it off. Well, I mean, we gotta talk to him, don't you think? I guess we better. Yes! Yes! Oh, she's so good! Thank you, Bill, for listening for once. Thank you. Is that Dan Mitzvah tank again? Uh, there's a pastor up in Baudet, uh, name of Frank Peterson. Thank you. It's been taking two minutes for them to do at the station. I'm just saying. <sighs> they did a backstory. Check for uh, uh, Lorne Malvo. Nothing. Okay. He was on that street on foot. Come on, Greta. Over. 
Why was he on that street on foot? Dad, do you want to... Oh, right. I'll just stick with the scanner. Okay. Got this one in pink. Do I look like I want a pink police scanner? Could be a gift for a lady. And in your experience, uh, police scanners, is that a gift ladies get what for? I had not once. Owned a riot shield, made her own jerky. I'll just stick with the black. Anything else? Yeah, I need a walkie-talkie. Yeah, afraid I can't just sell you one stretch. See the coming pairs? Maybe you could make a friend and give it to him. Maybe I could give it to you. Call you up late at night. You can listen to me shit on people. Just give him the one and get the fuck out of there, Jesus. <clears throat> That's a Walking Dead reference. The black man wasn't gonna pay it. Tell me what he said. It doesn't matter now. I broke a promise. Me. So I gotta pay. What exactly do you think is happening? The firstborn son. Knows what? I, I told Smenko take Dimitri someplace safe till this all blows over. He thinks I'm crazy. You think I'm crazy? Uh, We're only as good as the promises we keep. Pick me up in an hour. We'll get the money. He's gonna pay? Mm -hmm. I can't. A million dollars? My oh, God damn, we're doing this. We're really. Ugh. You're not doing anything, my friend. Father. Please step in. Sure. He's okay. Uh, yeah, am I, uh, did, did you mean to lock me in here? We got a big day tomorrow, get some rest. I don't want you getting cold feet. What, what if I gotta go to the toilet? You're a smart guy, you'll figure something out. Poop. <laughs> yeah, you, you, bought, you bought me the tie. Yeah. You... Shit. Is it a cut or what is it? Puncture, maybe. Hard to tell with all the gore. What happened to your hand? Socks. What about socks? Well, for $55, she, he threw in the shotgun. I don't understand. Were you shot? Did you pay Lord Malvo to kill Sam Hiss? I never paid him. Okay, offered to pay then. I never paid. Arrangements were made. And then, I don't know, you tell me. Things went south. Use us, miss. You got him. I want to see this go down so badly. Officer Grimley with his late night glass of milk. It's not even baby. <sighs> Don't you strip me. Let's say I know a person is guilty, has committed a crime, only, you know, I, I can't prove it. Like he has everyone else fooled, but, but I know. What am I supposed Find the proof. I'm not a detective. I mean, Molly, she's amazing. He loves her. Am I supposed to put myself in danger, or, or do I just let it go? Let it go, let it go. A rich man opens the paper one day. He sees the world is full of misery. I is this a... Uh... It's a parable. A rich man opens the paper one day. He sees the world is full of misery. He says, I have money. I can help. So he gives away all of his money, but it's not enough. He decides he was foolish to think just giving money was enough. So he goes to the doctor and says, doctor, I want to donate a kidney. After he knows he should feel good, but he doesn't, for people are still suffering. So he goes back to the doctor he says, Doctor, this time, I want to give it all, everything I am. You, you can't give away your whole body piece by piece. That's suicide. And he sends the man home. He's going to kill himself. 
So he gives the one thing he has left, his life. <laughs> and does it work? Does it stop the suffering? You live in the world, what do you think? What are you saying? Only a fool thinks he can solve the world's problems. Yeah, but you gotta try, don't you? Pause. What an amazing parable. There's such an amazing parable. I wrestle with this a lot um, in the, the kind of work that I do. Like, you have to be able to find a place in your mind where you are absolutely committed to making the world a better place. Like the utopia, like you have that vision in mind, it's real, you're just on your way. But also being able to be peaceful with, you know, you might get one inch closer to it in your lifetime, but the point is you're trying, you're shifting the boulder that little bit further up the hill and then someone else is going to take over the carrying of it and move it forward. And I think people tend to either go one or the other. And I've seen this happen with lots of people, like, you know, like people who were like, become really conservative in their later years, having been liberals when they're young. And they're just like, oh, you know, age has taught me that these things aren't possible. And they've like confused resignation for wisdom. So they think they've got older and wiser. And now all that's happened is they've become resigned and they've gone, I can't do it, so I'm I'm out, I'm out. I'm just gonna do good, gonna focus on this. And then there might be other people who don't give up, but like their their experience of the world is just like horrible because they can't let themselves experience joy or have or focus on their own lives and their own relationships or any of those things. And I've I found myself in both of those positions in the past. And actually one of the things like my focus for like 2019 and moving forward is that amazing equilibrium that comes when you have an intention and you just accept that's your intention and you also need to live like you joy is important your own joy is important it's as important as the joy you're trying to create in the world so it's like if you're not happy, you're sort of losing your own game. It's really interesting, really, really interesting. I'm glad that was in this episode. Can continue. I will continue to mull on this. Play. You got this, Officer Grimley. You don't have to do it all yourself. Is the point. Teamwork. <laughs>